What's going on guys and welcome back to the third installment of the Program Explained series. In this video, we're going to be covering a chest and back focus of our buddy day, which is of course day three of the six day per week program. Now, for those of you just tuning into the series, I'd like to again mention that these videos are based on my new hyper strength program, which has a four, five and six day per week frequency to fit your individual schedule. So check out my website, link in the description if you'd like a complete program with three frequencies as well as a guide to pretty much all the hypertrophy information you can ask for. So without further delay, let's jump right into the video, starting with our first exercise, which is the barbell bench press. Now, as previously mentioned, I selected the barbell bench press as the first exercise, given that is a compound movement, which is significantly more fatiguing than isolation movements, and therefore is placed at the beginning of your workout where you are strongest and best suited to do the exercise. Also, since this program is a power building program, you will of course want to mimic the same bench press form as you would use in a competition. So of course you generally want to arc your back as this will likely help in moving heavier loads. You'll also of course want to make sure that your upper back, glutes and heels are planted on the bench and floor and you're in a stable position ready for the use of leg drive without losing any of your contact points. Next, you'll generally want to grip the bar tight lift off and generally you'll also want to tuck your elbows in before initiating the descent then once descended you will want the bar to make contact with your chest and of course pause on every rep to mimic competition standards also keep in mind you'll want every rep to have as explosive a concentric as possible as well as every eccentric should be slow and controlled so now moving on to our second exercise we have the t-bar row supersetted with a dumbbell monkey shrug now if like me you don't have a t-bar row at your gym you can of course improvise by doing pretty much any other chest supported row variation also when it comes to the row you'll want to make sure when you're rowing your arms are flared away from your torso at least 45 degrees in order to focus on the traps rather than doing a lat bias row you'll also of course want to make sure it's chest supported in order to fully round your shoulder blades forward effectively stretching the traps under load which should elicit greater hypertrophy and also of course to stabilize your body in order to focus primarily on contracting your traps now for the shrug, since we want to focus on the upper traps, you'll generally want to bend over slightly. Then, when in the hole, you should focus on looking down in order to stretch your traps since your upper traps connect to the neck. Then contract by thinking of bringing your shoulders up and in towards your head in a sort of diagonal fashion. Also, when you're in the fully contracted position, think of shortening the traps by looking upwards to the ceiling since, as previously mentioned, they connect to your neck. So this should theoretically offer a stronger contraction. Now for both the row and shrug you'll want to follow a tempo of a two to three second hold in the stretch position followed by an explosive fast concentric with a one to two second hold in the contracted position and lastly perform a slow and controlled eccentric before initiating the next rep so with that we'll move on to our third exercise which is a decline dumbbell bench press now the reason i chose dumbbells for this movement was because with unilateral exercises you can limit any muscle imbalances as well as the fact that dumbbells allow for a greater range of motion which should should help with building better strength, especially in the stretch position, as well as it should theoretically elicit greater hypertrophy from that extra stretch. Now for why I chose a decline bench, it's because the first upper body day in the series was focused more towards hitting the upper chest region, therefore this day is more focused on the lower chest region. Now the general cues for this movement are to tuck your elbows in to where you feel works your chest best throughout the lift, which for me is usually around 45 degrees away from my torso, as well as you should safely try to go as deep as you possibly can in the hole for a really really good stretch on the pec with of course the usual tempo recommendations of holding in the hole for two to three seconds before initiating a explosive concentric followed by a slow and controlled eccentric so moving on to the fourth exercise, we have pretty much any mid to upper lat bias row, which in my case, I perform on this machine, given again, I thoroughly enjoy the stabilization and stretch benefits of a chest support when rowing, as well as the fact that my gym simply has no other rowing machines. God, I really need to change gyms. Anyway, with this exercise, you'll want to take a close grip width to hopefully bias the lats over any other back musculature, as well as you'll generally want to use a neutral grip as this will likely unbias the biceps contribution 
distribution to the lift as well. Unless, of course, you personally feel a better lat contraction with a different grip placement, in which case you can choose whichever grip placement feels best for you. Also, you'll want to, of course, pull from a medium to low shoulder flexion position, as this will hopefully bias the mid to upper lat region, which is generally anywhere from 30 to 100 degrees of shoulder flexion. So, of course, moving on to the fourth exercise, we have a lower pec fly variation. Now, typically for something like this, I recommend choosing whichever fly variation you feel works best for your lower pec region, which is why I use the pec deck rather than a cable fly or any other variation. Now, personally, since I have a significantly greater safe ROM than others, this variation works my chest best for my personal goals. However, the main tips to think about in whichever variation you choose are first to choose whichever variation you feel can safely provide you with the best stretch under load, with of course an emphasis on safely, since of course decreasing ROM for a significantly lower likelihood of injury is a good idea. You'll also want a variation that's conducive to steady progressive overload, as well as a variation that you enjoy and is readily available for sustainability in your exercise selections. And lastly, of course, a variation that has a good stimulus to fatigue ratio. Now, of course, with this exercise, again, I recommend my usual tempo of holding in the stretch position for two to three seconds, followed by an explosive concentric and controlled eccentric. However, I'd also like to mention that I recommend a isometric hold in the stretch position for 30 plus seconds after all your sets have been completed, given that this hold may provide greater hypertrophy outcomes, as well as it may likely increase your overall pec rom and strength with no downsides, given that you do it safely and of course don't mind the extra time commitment. Which leads me on to our sixth exercise, a wide grip seated cable row. Now for this exercise, you can of course choose whichever row you feel works best for your traps. However, I tend to use a non-chest supported variation contrary to my clear chest support bias, as well as contrary to the fact that you probably want to use a chest supported variation this late into your workout, given that your fatigue will of course detriment your ability to move heavier loads while also having to stabilize yourself. However, given that I simply like to switch things up every now and then and I also just find this row fun to include at the end of my workout. I just do them because I feel that I like it, regardless of how theoretically suboptimal it is. However, I'd also like to mention that not using a chest support has its own benefits, namely, of course, working on your often neglected stabilizer muscles. However, if you want to use a non-supported row, I still recommend you do them earlier in your workout if you want to squeeze as much theoretical optimality out of your workout. But anyway, moving on to the cues, you of course want to round your shoulder blades forward to get a nice stretch on the traps, holding for two to three seconds before performing a explosive concentric and slow eccentric. With this exercise, I also typically recommend flaring your arms away from your torso at around 70 to 90 degrees, given this will hopefully bias the traps more than the usual 45 to 90 degree flare that I typically recommend. And with that, we're on to our last exercise, which as usual is any upper ab bias crunch variation, which as I've mentioned constantly throughout the series will benefit greatly from the cue of actually rounding your spine forward to get a better contraction with your abs. And as usual for this exercise, I typically use a cable crunch machine. However, you can use whichever cable loaded variation that you feel works best for your abs. So with that, I'd like to thank you guys so much for making it this far into the video. And as usual, if you liked the video and found the information in the video useful, don't forget to leave a like, comment if you have any questions or feedback, and subscribe for more informational content like this. Also, don't forget to share the video if you found the information in the video useful and know someone else who might also find it useful as this will greatly help the growth of my channel. And lastly, if you guys want a complete program, I offer tons of great programs and guides on my website, link in the description. And with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I will be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.